Some probability problems may involve counting methods, such as the fundamental counting principle, permutations, or combinations. Remember that we use the fundamental counting principle when we have so many choices at this stage, and this stage, and this stage, etc. We use permutations if the order is important, and we use combinations if the order is not important, if we are choosing a group of items. We're now going to combine what we know about probability with what we know about different counting methods. If given Given a problem that involves the fundamental counting principle, you can actually draw out your spaces. What are the total number of favorable outcomes? So what is it that we want in the numerator divided by what are the total number of possible outcomes in the denominator? If the question involves permutations or an arrangement, you're going to again set it up. What is the number of favorable arrangements in the numerator divided by the total number of arrangements in the denominator? And if we're dealing with a combination question, you're going to determine what is the number of favorable groups in the numerator? What is the number of total groups in the denominator? We're going to take a look at three examples from your textbook so you can see how we could approach some of these questions. In the first, a credit card company randomly generates generates temporary four-digit passcodes for cardholders. So think back, when we did password type questions before, we often drew out the spaces and then determined how many possibilities are there at each stage. It's a fundamental counting principle type of question. Suri is expecting her credit card to arrive in the mail. Determine the probability that her passcode will consist of four different even digits. Now, that's not the criteria for all passcodes. That's the criteria for her passcode. So I'm going to begin by setting up here. We are looking for four different even digits. That's our favorable outcomes. Most people find it easier to start with the denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and draw out my spaces. There is no restriction on the denominator. So I have 10 possible choices here all digits 0 through 10, and then 10, and then 10, and then 10. It doesn't say that I can't repeat on any of them. I'm just not able to repeat the digits on Surrey's passcode. So then in the numerator, even digits are 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. I have five potential even digits. Once I use one of those numbers, I have one less choice for the next position, and then one less choice, and then one less choice. Each of those spaces has to be a different digit. I can go ahead and multiply the numerator, or if I wanted to, I could go 5, P4 is also going to be the same. This is like a permutation. We're just not going down to 1. And then the denominator is just going to be 10 to the power of 4, which is 10,000. That fraction I can reduce. I can put it into a decimal or a percentage if I wanted to as well. In our second question, we are dealing with cards. And again, think back to your counting methods. We know cards is often combinations. So in this particular card game called Crazy Eights, players are dealt eight cards from a standard deck of 52 playing cards. Determine the probability that a hand will consist of eight hearts. So again, the order doesn't matter in this question. We are looking for what is the probability that of the eight cards that were dealt, all eight of them are going to be hearts. I know this is a combination question, so I'm setting up my denominator for all possible groups of eight, and then I'm going to start with the denominator because again, most people find this easiest. In a standard deck of cards, there are 52 cards. We are choosing eight of them. And then in the numerator, I need eight hearts. That's going to make up my hand of eight cards. I don't need any cards other than those eight hearts. I know that there are 13 hearts in a deck of cards. It is one quarter of the deck, and we are choosing eight of them. You can enter both the numerator and denominator into your calculator. And if the question does not specify what format to give the final answer in, you can either leave it as a fraction or convert to a decimal or percentage. And in our final question, we have a committee of 12 people. Two of these people will be randomly chosen to be president and secretary. I am choosing people to be president and secretary. Determine the probability that Ben and Jen will be chosen. Now, I'm not looking for the probability that Ben, let's say, will be president or Jen will be secretary or any other version of those two roles. I just want to know of the 12 people, Will Ben and Jen be chosen? I'm going to set this up as a combination question. I'm choosing groups of two that can then be assigned into those roles after. 
what is the probability Ben and Jen will be the two people that are chosen? Okay, so again, beginning with the denominator, we have 12 people we're choosing two. There is one Ben, we're choosing him, and there is one Jen, we're choosing her. Now we could also go in the numerator, two choose two, there are two people and we are choosing both of them. That would also work. Now when we put this into our calculator, either one choose one times one choose one, that's one times one, which is one, or two choose two is just one. There is only one way we can choose a group group of two people. The denominator 12 choose 2 is 66. This is the probability that Ben and Jen will be chosen. This particular section is tricky at first, but as you keep practicing and becoming more familiar with the different types of problems, you're going to find it does get easier and easier to know which method to use and how to go about setting up and calculating that probability.